Hello everyone! Welcome to this gameplay stream for Fireside for our Steam page. Um, I'm Paul, I'm the CEO of Emergo Entertainment. We developed Fireside and I want to show you a bit, yeah, what our game is about. want to play it a bit for roughly an hour. If you find interesting what you see in the stream, then wishlist the game below. I would be very happy if you could support us in that way, especially now around Steam Next Fest. Uh, we are looking for wishlists and, you know, getting all of that algorithm attention. Mm. And yeah, I hope you like it. Uh, it's a calm game about the breaks on a journey, but I think it's best if I just start playing and uh, show you that way. So yeah, deleted my save file and pressing start right now on a new game of Fireside. The ocean is stormy tonight. The roar of waves fills the air and thunder rolls in the distance. A small lifeboat is dancing on top of the angry waves. You find yourselves inside the lifeboat, battling your way toward the shore amid the rolling tempest. Behind, the re behind you, the remains of your ship are slowly sinking to the ocean floor. So, our ship is already sinking, unfortunately. Your lifeboat groans under the strain of the waves, but by the time you're realizing it's breaking apart, you've already been thrown into the ocean, swallowing cold, salty water. Pieces of wood and lost goods are floating all around you and reach for the thing nearest to you. It is... Let's go for the timber beam here. You cling tight to the timber beam, paddling through the waves with the wood to support you. You keep paddling, eventually managing to reach the shore. And we crawl up to the beach. And the world goes black. Hello? Can you hear me? My head hurts. And yeah, we get found here by the first character we meet in Fireside, Costa. And uh, he introduces himself shortly. our wood back and asks us our name so I'm just gonna put my name in here Paul try to remember anything but yeah it turns out we're a traveling merchant who just yeah got yeah. caught in this storm and washed up on these unknown shores And yeah, we have to make do here somehow. Find out uh, where we are, what we are doing, who these people are, who this person is. And yeah, explore the world of Fireside. So for now, let's go to bed. And uh, go into the world. So we can look around here, we can zoom a bit, and we can see here that this is the first area where all of these campfires are connected. Now how Fireside works is you travel from campfire to campfire, and uh, by doing so you sometimes like, uh, like find events like this one here, like for example this Driftwood event, where we can expect the broken chest and happen to find a blanket. You know? And then we finish our our journey and uh, come to the first campfire. And this is where, let's say, the, the most of the gameplay of Fireside takes place, at the campfire. And we meet Beth and... Yeah, unfortunately, we're out of business. We just lost all of our, all our goods. Hmm. Ah. But, oh wonder, <laughs> Beth found a, happens to need a blanket. It was really, um, during development, we iterated quite a lot on this, um, how to introduce the 
player with the core mechanic of this game, which is the trading mechanic. Since you're a merchant, uh, you trade, and it was very important for us since, you know, Fireside is a cozy game about the breaks on a journey. Um, we definitely want, didn't want to have a combat system. That was like one of the very important design decisions we made very early on. And so we thought, okay, but we still don't want to go like full text adventure. Um, let me just quickly get rid of my time tracking tool here. Um, okay. Uh, we didn't want to do a full text adventure. And um, so we thought about, you know, what could like another interesting core mechanic be? And we came up with this trading mechanic where you have the scale and you can trade. And um, how it works is basically you add items to the scale and the scale shows, shows you what your character basically thinks the trade is worth. So you think the trade is worth, but the other person could actually have a different idea. So if we say, okay, we trade a blanket for a rope, for example, um, this other character could actually, because we know they want a blanket, could, could be willing to give us two coins on top of the rope, um, which we will offer now, and which Beth actually did. So that's very important because we wanted a mechanic which, you know, has some variance and some interest, but at the same time um, isn't too <laughs> min-maxy because this, this idea of min-maxing is also something we, we felt like it's not like the core idea of Fireside. You can min-max quite a lot, actually, if you really like put your mind to it. But we didn't want the game to shove like this min-maxing into your face. So, and here's actually, you know, a reference to that. Um, like, I'm definitely a min-maxer myself, so. But Costa tells me to take it easy a bit, and that's exactly the idea of Fireside. Take it easy. Good night. Oh. And you can see Beth is very happy about their new blanket. Right, go to bed. Finish this first campfire, and now we get the choice. When Stanley came up across a set of two open doors, he chose the Fireside to the top. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this is really the core loop of Fireside. You travel from campfire to campfire and you explore this wilderness. Um, so here's two new travelers and a wonder if one of them actually wants a rope. The intro is a bit, to be honest, scripted in that way, you know, uh, but yeah, just explaining all of the mechanics to the players. So again, we can try here, maybe since they want the rope, we can try to get some more ingredients. <laughs> And they actually did that. Oh. And ah, this guy actually wants an apple. So let's get more stuff. Oh. And, and already you can see we expanded our stock quite a bit <laughs> by just paying attention to the desires and uh, trading for them. Zane, good evening. What's that? Glowing rock? That's odd. It's a shrine. Why is it glowing? The spirit nexus. Okay. Keeps people connected. We can even met message each other and even exchange goods. Mm -hmm. I'm pretending ah. I don't know what this is about, obviously. I <laughs> I've played this a bunch, but yeah. Yeah, and, well, we do the only thing which is natural, which is touching the stone, the magical glowing stone, because maybe we can find someone. But unfortunately, oh no, we get pulled away, teleported. What happened? What is going on? Uh... Oh, what's happening? Mm. Who's that? <laughs> Sounds grumpy. Snack. Um, so originally this character here, the player character, our internal name for him is Nick. So it's Nick and Nack. Nick Nack. And sorry Nack, I didn't want to break anything. Oh shit. A broken Nexus? Yeah, he's not making any sense at all.
Hmm. Where even is here? The core of the spirit nexus and I'm its keeper, Nack. Okay, so Nack is in charge of this mystical nexus. Tja. What is this nexus? Spirit nexus connects people from faraway places. Something that helps old friends stay in touch and makes travelers' lives easier. Like the internet. <laughs> A bit. But it's cooler than the internet. Because you can send items and you don't need any additional, like, uh, agencies to do it. Like, the, the mail. <laughs> Well, we didn't break it, but sure, I guess. I smell a quest. <laughs> we fix the shrines with soul energy, okay? And how do we get soul energy? Soul energy comes from gratitude and kindness, and this was really the other, like, core, core, core idea to Fireside. We want it to be a game about the breaks on a journey, a relaxing game. How can we make it not be about your health points, right? So many games are about health points, but in Fireside it's about collecting soul energy, and not, which comes from gratitude and kindness, and not about, yeah, trying to, like, kill other, other travelers. And Nack is very not chill about this and teleports us away straight away back to a campsite in the river delta where we get to introduce the soul energy this far down here. And oh look, here's a traveler who is, hmm, yeah, waiting for us. Hey, hey Marin. Bridge. Do you need helping? help repairing it because then uh, you're thankful and we get soul energy and they need two timber beams and a set of nails and I think fortunately we already have one set of timber beams which we actually remembered which is nice yeah like stuff like this uh, remembering that the player picked that particular timber beam right in the beginning of the game uh, is like a lot of what we sort of try to make possible with with our scripting and also integrate some of it we didn't like get to do as much as we would have wanted of, of that kind of stuff just because it's super complex to maintain that kind of content but there is quite quite some of it in, in the game where the player can pick up some item and then an NPC will react to it or Knack at the house will react to what you did out in the wild. Um, like these sorts of, you know, some someone doing something earlier and then the game remembering and referencing it later, I think this really makes a cohesive world also. Um, and we offered to look for more materials here and as we can see that also rewarded us with some soul energy. And we can try to trade for more stuff. Um, so this fish here wants a seashell and this person here wants a carrot and they actually have a timber beam and nails. So since you have the carrot we can try to trade this apple for the carrot. Nice and then oh yeah we can also quickly open our quest log because the game is telling us here we have like notes on all of our quests and also notes on all of the like main travelers we met so far. But let's uh, let's try and get this timber beam for the carrot. And here you can see now that you know even though it's it's not as simple as um, this person has a certain desire and we have a carrot, we can fulfill this desire, so they will just give us anything. That's not how it works. It's a bit more, you know, you really need to get into this trading mode. And I think if we just 
Maybe try this. This can work. Yeah. So, yeah. They're very happy about their carrot, and we already have all of the items we need for Marin. And she told us to meet her down here later. So now um, we move, continue moving, and we always pick up the resources on the path here. So this way we can sort of get some new resources and not only expand our stock by trading. A little droplet looks at you with watery eyes, literally. Shift nervously. Who are you? No. Oh, Kevin. No. What's your mom? Uh -huh. And this little droplet's mother is a cloud apparently in the mountains, already teasing the third area of the game. There's three areas in total. The first one is this river delta, the second one is a forest, the third ones are the mountains. I think it's not too much spoilers because it's really not um, about what kind of area it is, it's just plenty of areas for, for you to explore and also about whom you meet there and in the mountains, who knows? <laughs> Maybe we can also find Kevin's mom there, but we definitely won't be able to get there. This this was a cool metaphor, also. Alright. Promise to go help Kevin and we have another trade here, so let's just get the sugar. And you want the sugar. So since we already have everything we need right now, I'm just gonna gift you something. Oh. They're of course very happy about that and that gives us a lot of soul energy. And up here you can see uh, the campfire time. So. These uh, logs here show how many actions basically I have per campfire and I could also actually we can get another timber beam here. Yeah, I don't think I have enough trade for it right now. Okay, never mind then, but I could um, add some wood to the campfire also to get more actions again at the camp. But I'm just I'm going a bit faster through the tutorial here so I can show you more of the the actual gameplay. Pro tip, you can hold spacebar to skip the walking animation if you want to. Um, can get a bit, you know, so-so, you know, we want Fireside to be a relaxing and calm game, so I think uh, it's not like a quite slow walking animation is nice. Also, you know, for you to enjoy the world, so you have a bit of time to take a breather. This is like very much what Fireside is about, you know. You having the time to take a breather, the game not stressing you out. So many other games are so needy and sort of like con continuously try to force the player to do something. But as you can see right now, you know, if I don't do any inputs, the game doesn't push me in any way. And it just has this very relaxing atmosphere. All right now I'm just gonna go and talk to Marin. Also here, you know, as long as I don't click, the dialogue doesn't progress. We don't have any basically point in the game where the game progresses without you sort of progressing it, which is very important for us and actually, yeah, works quite well in my opinion. And I have everything we need, Marin, so what's the plan? Meet me at the bridge tomorrow. Okay, well, we promised Marin to fix the bridge and uh, we go fix the bridge, keep walking. Okay, and we repair the bridge together and that gives us a lot of soul energy. 
and we can see we already have two soul energy tokens here. And these tokens we will see in a bit here. Oh, that's not good. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. But yeah, um, as I was saying, uh, we are here and want to continue with the shrine. So uh, we can use these tokens to do stuff like repairing the shrine. So by when touching the token, an, er, the, touching the shrine, sorry, an odd feeling flows through us. And we can see here, we can use the tokens to repair things related to the spirit nexus, which is, for example, the shrine here. And after touching the shrine to restore it, soon we're wrapped in strings of blue light and pulled back. Now we are back at the house, back at the core of the spirit nexus. What? I wasn't traipsing. What do you want, Nack? Mm. Nothing is fine. Pull me back here. What are you talking about? It, we were draining Nack's soul energy by traveling through the wilderness. are bound to bed together just by an unfortunate coincidence. Uh oh. That's not good. So what is the consequence? Limit my travel days to conserve the energy. No. So, Nak tells us here that the spirit nexus, we sort of, when we touched that first shrine, we got entangled somehow, and now, unfortunately, <laughs> Nak uh, tells us that that means we can't travel from here for too long. Uh, yeah, I don't really have a choice. And uh, we can use these tokens to power up the shrines. And Nak tells us one just um, fell off the shrine during the storm down here. And we can walk here and simply pick it up and upgrade the shrine. Oh. A merchant. We lost all of our items when Nack teleported us back, but now he gave us some more stuff. And he tells us he limited our travel days, <laughs> so we can take one item back. Limited travel days, bring only one item, fix the spirit nexus, look for lost, to lost, look for lost tokens. That's the situation we're in. Very easy. Let's do it. So, yeah, we picked up everything and can now teleport back through the Nexus to the River Delta. And yeah, this is now the end of the tutorial. So we've managed to basically st uh, finish the tutorial for Fireside and we'll now go into the regular game where we just explore this, this world. Uh, let's just take a look around here. So. 
we've actually explored quite a bit of the river delta already. We started back here, and uh, up here was the bridge which we repaired. So let's go to the bottom left and check out what is to, what there's to see there. I'm just gonna skip the walking animation, and uh, yeah, we travel from campfire to campfire and meet this beautiful lady here, which is a mermaid. Is she dancing? has lost her voice. And tells us we should find a mysterious mermaid called Ira. Where is she? But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> hmm. She gives us the hint that if we find three people who know about Ira, we might find something else out about her. Okay. At the same time, uh, we can see here that we have already set up, I think I did that subconsciously earlier, the Vok, which I will show you now, which is like the last like big gameplay element, uh, which is quite important to Fireside. Karak. You're eager for some cooking instructions, hmm? You know there's cooking in the game yet, but water and flour make for a great dough for any kind of breaded pastry. Mm -hmm. Took a few notes in my cookbook. Now we get introduced to the cooking system. Combine ingredients to like delicious meals and fulfill other travelers' desires. So click the box, add items to the box, and then whenever time passes, items are cooked. So, for example, we have water here and flour. So if we add these, then try a trade. For example, we could try to get these timber beams by trading a bunch of stuff for them. Oh, this guy actually wants some twigs, so let's do that instead. Now, you can see time passed, and now the wok is cooking. We made some dough, which is very nice. And we can check out what we made by going to the cookbook here and seeing, okay, flour and water together make dough. And back here it says how much time uh, it takes to make, make this recipe. So now, if we just keep that in there and we wait one, like, an additional unit of time, which we can do by just clicking down here, we now made bread from the dough by cooking it for long enough. So now we have bread in our inventory, which is nice. And this is also really a, a core part, really core part of, of Fireside, is this cooking system. So we have the trading system and the cooking system, and both together make sort of, yeah, with like the core of the actual like Fireside gameplay. Although we, um, yeah, also see these stories as very important, you know, the NPCs and uh, the stories they, they have. Rough course irritating. <laughs> as lovely as walking along the beach all day sounds, you realized a long time ago that it's also quite exhausting. And sand gets everywhere. What should we do? Let's try taking a shortcut. You decide to climb the dunes in hopes of reaching one of the easier paths. Oh no, we tumble down the dunes and sand gets everywhere. <laughs> That's terrible and it actually cost us some soul energy because, yeah, it was so annoying. But here's an old f a familiar face, Costa. So let's talk to him. Paul, you're back. Ah. Costa. I touched a weird rock and then I think I got teleported away. Ooh, the shrine. It's already spreading news. Hmm. <gasps> That's 
ask about this mermaid we found. She runs around, business around here. There's a second mermaid too. Maybe it's the Sira. Who knows? Um, okay. And this person here has some more cooking tips with us. Alice. A single fruit is just a fruit, but if you put two of them together, you make fruit salad. Huh, thank you, Alice. Do you have two fruits? No. Do you have two fruits by any chance? Also, no. Huh. Well, not really much we can do with our current knowledge. So, I guess let's just end the night. Go to bed. And go to the next campsite. And what's very important uh, in Fireside is you can see these shrines here. And yeah, this is part of our main quest. Go around and upgrade these shrines. So. Let's pick up some spice along the way and uh, go here and try to upgrade the shrine. Shrines. You can send items back to your house from shrines. You can send only two items back per evening and each item costs soul energy. So choose wisely. So as you might remember, Nak told us that we lose all of our items at the end of the journey except for one. So we can use the shrine to send back items. But first, we'd probably want to make sure that we, um, that the items are we send back are actually the ones we want. So I know, for example, that I want these timber beams because um, we can see here that we can actually use those to, to upgrade. Uh, our house, for example, we have the dog house or our actual house or the storage at our house. We can use timber beams to upgrade that. So let's put that timber beam in here and send it back. Whoosh. And then also let's talk to this person here giving us a cooking tip. Coconut milk and spice are the base for any curry. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, Rose. That is very helpful because I think we just picked up some spice and some coconut milk. So put that in the wok and then talk to this mysterious person here. Huh? Hey there, buddy. Welcome to Hopper's Seaside Ferry Service. Uh-huh. Who are you? And it's Hopper? Okay. <laughs> Ah, and he has a brother on the island to the east. Most specialist things there. How much is the ferry? One ferry ride for free. Oh, that's very nice. One ferry service token. <laughs> I can use it once. To go to the island. Thank you. Um, is anyone here? Because I'm making some curry. Just thinking if I had could have rice, that would be nice. But no, unfortunately not. Uh, yeah, so let's just wait a bit. And curry takes mm. two units of time to cook um, so we made a bit of curry base and now we can try to trade that and maybe the bread or maybe we can try to trade that and these things here for the wood because what we can do is we can put that in here and send it back to the house. So unfortunately for us, we don't have enough to upgrade the shrine, which I didn't pay attention to. But okay, let's just go to bed. And here's the next day. 
last day of our trip this time and uh, and yeah let's try to manage to fill our token so let's just go back here because I want this banana uh, or we could have gone to the island actually I yeah, yeah. whatever <laughs> and there are some fishers they hooked the real monster yeah of course we helped them nice that it gave us some soul energy because helping is good yeah gratitude soul energy comes from gratitude okay and here's Marin again okay when you actually want a banana that's very good um, let's talk to Marin first hey hi captain Yeah, okay, so she's also talking about another mermaid, so I think that's definitely Ira, <laughs> with a mouth like a sailor. So that's good to know, and you actually want our bread, very nice. So I'm just gonna gift this person our bread. Get some nice soul energy here, and then here... I'm not sure, my steam is spamming. Just because I, I deactivated Steam right now, real quick. Remember to wish list. <laughs> I uh, would be very happy if you were to wish list. But I want to try to trade this. Let me do that. Very nice. So we got a coconut smoothie oh. for our banana. And then we can go to bed. And since this was our last day of traveling, we now return home and we can decide on one item, which happens to be the coconut smoothie. And we return home. And here we are. Ah. Aha. So Nat thinks Ari herself is at fault for losing her voice. So, I guess we really have to find Ira. Um, and here we can see we got some items. This timber beam and this log. And we also brought back one soul energy token, which we can use upgrade the shrine here which is very nice because this will give us additional travel time um, so I don't think we can do anything else so let's just go back to the river and, uh, game warns us here that we can still take items we collected but I don't need them right now and also I want to keep them for more upgrades um, so I'll check something. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's go north first uh, this time. Explore north and skip the walking animation. And uh, yeah, there's another person here waiting for us. This guy wants our chai. Oh, he wants chai. We only have a coconut smoothie. But you have two bananas. Well, maybe... Okay, let's talk to you first. Oh! Oh. So, yeah, this is another one of those things I mentioned earlier, right? The game. Remembering what we did earlier and then referencing it later. So, like, the tooling we built for this, like, interactive dialogue stuff was really one of the biggest things we, we did for Fireside. It's actually interesting because we could use that same tooling also for, for other projects then. For example, there was, like, uh, 
decision-based game. Ah, but maybe too much detail. I, I don't know. So like, I don't know if you know the game Reigns. Uh, we made a similar game to that for for a client actually, um, and based the decision tool in that game on the same tool as Fireside. So that was pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, we got some soul energy because this guy really liked that we helped those trash fishers. And I actually want to get some stuff from this guy. Will you do that? Nah. Okay, then maybe just one bowl of rice is fine. Because then we can put rice and water in here. I'm just gonna meta game a bit. Nobody told us about this recipe yet, but that doesn't matter. Um, so you can cook anything even if you don't have a tip for it yet. You can make some steamed rice here. What's cracking? My name's Donnie. Welcome to my hood. <laughs> Donnie the turtle. Let's ask him about Ari too. That gives us the first soul energy coin. <laughs> she knows her. Mm -hmm. Or he knows her. They know her? I think Donnie's pronouns are he and him? I should really know the pronouns of all of our characters. Yeah, still steaming the rice. Uh. Yeah. So, mm. we made some steamed rice, which is very nice. And then had to go to bed because the campfire time was over. But steamed rice is very nice because it's the base ingredient for a lot of stuff. Ooh. And here's Ira. I, I really like Ira. Ira is uh, such a cool character design. Ach, and he now this guy wants chai and we don't have... Don't know how to make chai. You want dough? And you actually have some flour, that's good, so... Trade this for the flour. Ah. Okay, and this is also now interesting, you can see that we personally think this trade is equal, but this character just is not in the mood to trade equally. Which is too bad, because that makes that trade a lot worse, and this guy doesn't have flour, but they do want water. I don't remember how to make chai right now, unfortunately. <laughs> um... But we can make some fruity rice balls by adding this rice and fruit. And then talking to Ira. Mm. Oh, yes, you. Mm. Uh-huh. Ira, you're quite strange. Hey! Ari's voice back. Ira is responsible for stealing Ari's voice. <laughs> She's not giving her voice back. Why? Because she's not a normal mermaid. She was mocking her. And that's why Ira stole Ari's voice. So what we were going for a bit with this sort of story, I guess, was a bit of this, you know, schoolyard drama sort of vibe so we didn't want to have like any super dramatic stories with you know you need to really save the entire world and it's uh, doom is there's impending doom and all of this stuff also we didn't want because we just wanted a cozy game but the breaks on a journey so all our stories i mean there's it's not like there isn't any conflict because if you don't have any conflict at all then you know you don't really have any uh yeah narrative you can really start but it's all sort of you know quite uh, relatable, uh, hopefully. And now she offers us, she could give back Ari's voice, if we do her a little favor, and make her popular. I think, pfft, that sounds very difficult. <laughs> Bet you can't find any around one around here who likes me better than <laughs> Ari. Um, well, I don't know. So... Here we got our fruity rice balls, and this person here tell, wants to tell us something. Uh, what do you want to tell us? Hello! 
My name is Ria. Who are you? I'm Paul. Oh, that's great. Today I met someone going to the south. They were looking for steamed rice. Oh. So, someone to the south was looking for steamed rice. That's... <laughs> that's rather unfortunate. Because, um... Oh, but you actually want free rice balls. Okay, that's nice. Um, because we didn't actually uh, keep. Uh, what 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 did I want to say? We didn't actually keep our steamed rice, but we made it like we made fruity rice balls out of it. So we don't have any steamed rice anymore. But maybe we can get at least some more water. So hopefully we can cook some at the next campfire. And nice. I actually did that. I was not sure if this character was gonna trade for that, but they wanted the fruity rice balls badly enough. So now you want some dough, but so uh, decision now here, you know, uh, it's always about making decisions. And I already told you that I'm more of the min maxi kind of player, even though Fireside doesn't like shove a lot of min maxi in your face, it does provide potential for you to do that so a decision i can make now is i could use this timber beam put it into the campfire and then use the time i get back uh, to make some dough which athalos here wants i'm actually going to sh show you right now how that goes so i just drag that here and now i get some campfire time back depending on you know the magnitude of wood i put into the campfire i can get more or less back and i'm just gonna put the flour and the water in here and then wait okay because usually if i wouldn't have waited here for the dough i would have um uh, or if i wouldn't have uh, put f wood into the campfire now the evening would be over but like this i can now still have the time to uh, give athalos this and maybe get another log and a banana maybe all of that nice oh <gasps> I was again not sure if Athalos was gonna do it um, because we noted that earlier he was a bit more greedy than your average traveler because he didn't want to do the equal trade. But I still had two units of time here, so I guess I, I like, you know, it was worth a try to get the flower, the banana, and the lock. Okay, but that's nice. So now we can go to bed. And we can go to going towards the south here to the shrine. And this time we have a token so we can upgrade the shrine. That's very good. Picked up some more water along the way and we... There should be a guy here wanting steamed rice if I have it. I'm remembering it correctly, but unfortunately there's no one with regular rice, so it doesn't really matter. But there's someone with a reed, which we need. Hello, Lord Falk. To the north. North steam rice. Ah, shit, okay. Okay, I forgot that then. You want a curry. Yeah, I guess there's no spice here, right? Hmm, unfortunate. Not really much we can do right now. And here now the shrine tells us, oh yeah, you can upgrade me. So let's do that, upgrade the shrine. Uh, this now gives us the ability to one, go back home from the shrine, and also two, to start our journey at the shrine. So this is the way we can really make progress in the areas, is by upgrading these shrines. And for now, I think I want to send some stuff back. Let's see if we can get this read. Okay, that was quite expensive. But now we can send both of these back and get some more materials for upgrading, which is nice. The coconut shake. Uh, this was the one <laughs> where you shake it and then you shake it hard. We gotta commit. Nice. We've got a coconut. <laughs> Very nice. I 
And here's Ir Ari again, whom we can tell about our discovery. But first, let's trade this, get some spice, and make a curry base. Because the coconut can be made into coconut milk, and the coconut milk and the curry, the spice can be made into coconut, yeah, into curry base. That, that's what I want to say. Okay, Ari. <sighs> Mm. Uh oh, now we have to confront Ari with the fact that Ira, she's been bullying Ira. But... <laughs> How do we make Ira popular? Okay, so yeah, now we have coconut milk in here, so now we can continue with that. I'm just checking if there's anything I want. Oh, you actually want the curry base, that's good to know. So, could try to trade, you know, something like this, but yeah, no way that's happening. That's fine. We just wait for the curry base. Here it is. And now, put the curry base in here and... Maybe trade it for some dark chocolate? Nice. Right, and this person now, hello, my name's Benedict. Marin to the, so I'm Marin going to the west. That's also nice because now since the evening is over, we can travel to the west and find Marin. Where's Marin in the west? Here. It now shows us on the map. That's actually perfect because that's also where the shrine is and uh, we can use that to send some more items back. Saltwater spring, okay nice. This is one of those events which is actually random so you need to be careful when taking a sip from the water. Would have lost soul energy if I had just straight committed there. Okay, nice. Another cooking tip. Marin has some stuff. And you want some shells. So let's try to do that. Um, we do this. No. Yeah, because those timber beams are really quite valuable. But I think I want some more ingredients. Oh. Make some fruit salad here. Marin, okay, Marin, let's talk to you. Did you find out why Ari has lost her pretty mm. voice? Yeah, it was stolen, stolen by Ira, and she also knows Ira. And now, mm, Marin tells us about her quest, that she, in the, as a matter of fact, has lost her peg leg. As you can see, Marin is only has one leg, because She's a pirate, I guess, and, well, she's lost her leg. And, uh, tells us that the toad on the island actually stole her leg. Her peg leg, or not stole it, but won it at a game of cards. So, I guess we have to go to that island after ah. all. And now I really, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, really bugged that we didn't upgrade that shrine earlier, otherwise we could have done that easily. But... Let's get this fruit salad first, and let's see here. We have the dark chocolate recipe hint here. Can we trade like this, maybe? Maybe? Nah. Oh no, that no, this sucks now. Okay, now I. Uh, now I misplayed a bit here because I don't have enough time to send everything back home. Can upgrade the shrine another time. We have now now have three slots, but I only need two for now. Send home those two items. And then just get the recipe tip, I guess. Mixing coconut milk with any fruit makes an exotic smoothie. Ah, that's how you make a uh, co co coconut smoothie. Yeah, right. And you can see here again, all of these quests, and then in the cookbook, 
we have now this tip with coconut smoothie and we can also see everything we've cooked so far so that's also very useful take the rice go back home and let's hope we can upgrade a bit of stuff we can upgrade the ah, we need two reeds to upgrade the house okay we can upgrade the storage here which actually might be kind of necessary soon and up here we can upgrade the doghouse but uh, I think and what does this cost again shells and nails okay we can upgrade that I think we cannot yet upgrade this bridge here because for that we need the uh, we need the second resource for the second area so let's just upgrade the storage for now. Nice. And yeah, let's go on one more adventure. Or one more journey. So now you can see also what happens now that we've upgraded one of the shrines. You can now choose where to start. So either here here one two three fires to get to the island and this is the same I think one two three so it doesn't really matter um, so I'm just gonna go here again and then go south and travel to the island because that's where the frog is try a little sip it's cool and refreshing in this case if I would have committed hard uh, so to say on the on the sip I think I would have gotten more soul energy but yeah, here's Costa. Hello, Costa. Wants to talk to us again, and uh, this person wants our dark chocolate, so that's great. So let's get all of your stuff. Nice. I got a bunch oh. of soul energy too. And you want curry base, but I don't think I have curry right now. No, but we can talk to Costa. Well, did you manage to delve deeper into the mystery of why Ari might have lost her voice? Yes. Ooh. And Costa actually also introduces us to the concept of cooking. So if we wouldn't have, you know, read about the earlier, <laughs> earlier in this in this dialogue, he tells us about it and that he wants some bread. But we can also do to complete this quest is simply trade for bread. Don't actually have to cook it. If this NPC would trade with us, thank you very much. And then just gift it to Costa. Here you go. Here's your bread. If you want it. Ooh. Very happy about that. Oh, that smell, the way the crust crunches. Oh, it's got a, a really big amount of soul energy. Nice. And he gives us a stylish bandana. <laughs> I, what, I wonder what that could be for. Listen, while we're sitting here eating, I have a suggestion to make. This business with Arin Ira is unnerving me. And he's suggesting he could join us and have a little chat with Ira, so that's great. So we can make Ira more popular. <laughs> and the more we progress here in the river delta, the more we get to, yeah, uh, make Ira popular. Now the next, and yeah, next campfire already, we can complete this quest. Nice, get some rice here. What's with these greedy NPCs, huh? I really need this rice, okay. Um, so they don't want to trade the rice with us, unfortunate. I wanted the rice, but okay. diversify the items I have and go to the next campfire 
So I'll try to make my way to the island. So you have some more infos for us? Chais. Ah, what did they say? Okay, we have to check. Okay, someone wants chai. So now really I have to figure out how to make chai. I think I remembered how to make chai. So what we need is still sugar and you want spice. That's good. So you can have my spice if you give me your sugar. Oh, nice. And I think water, water, coconut, and sugar was chai. Let's upgrade the shrine here before we forget. And send back some stuff. Then let's talk to Hopper. Yeah, mm. nice. Made the chai. So I think there's about 60 or so unique recipes in the game. We've made how many so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight. So yeah, a lot more recipes to discover. And um, with the, I think around eight hours of playtime, eight to 10 hours, that's a good amount uh, for you to see. So now was, where was the person one in the north? Okay, that's unfortunate. So we can't go there, but we can pay the items to go via the ferry to the other shore and uh, <coughs> explore over there and hopefully find Marin's peg leg. And I gotta say this water here, this water effect, making like a water effect which fits the rest of the art style was really challenging. We made like a first version of that water. Um, in a different way and uh, it looked about the same I'd say but uh, then we tried to port the game to the Nintendo Switch and uh, suddenly like the frame rate was so low it was like 12 FPS or something and largely because of the water <laughs> so we had to redo all of it and now the way it works is pretty cool <laughs> but I won't go into much detail but yeah so yeah, here we have the other frog. Excuse me, are you squatter? What do you want? <laughs> oh, he just wants to be in peace. I want to trade. He has a special sack. Let's trade. Okay. Here, take this chai I just got. Maybe give me... Okay, no, wait. We can make some curry first. Gotta be careful that the evening isn't over, so I guess let's get the special sack now. You reach into Squatter's special sack, excited to find out what valuable things you find today. And we get the peg leg, which is nice. We happen to make two curries, which is also very, curry bases, which is also very nice. And, but we don't have any water here. And uh, you actually had some, right? Yeah. Mm, so maybe trade one curry base for one water plus two apples. No, that's not, let's do it like this. All right, evening over and we got 
all of the stuff so we can back go back one more time to the shrine and hopefully uh, cook some nice curry maybe even fruity curry which would be awesome and then send that back to the house hopefully have all of the upgrade items and then yeah go go to upgrade some more and finish this let's play so first things first we need to make steam dries Zack. Zack. Hello. Gorvenal. Making candied fruits is quite easy. You only need to cook fruit with sugar. Okay, that's good info. And you want dark chocolate and chai, and you want steamed rice and spicy rice. Ooh, and you actually have a silver lily pad. I think we are... Okay, I can tell you about this too. So there's certain items in the game which are not super ultra rare, but quite rare. I think like a 3% spawn chance or something like that. 3 to 5%. Silver lily pad is one of them. Um, that's like trophy items because, as you could see, I could offer this guy my whole inventory. Could actually... Uh, let's make a even more bigger demonstration of this let's see doctor here okay yep 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 we can get another fairy token and we can take the steam rise we could try to give him everything we have right now for the silver lily pad and no matter how much he wants it we would put like he even wants the steam rice right um, and he, he he definitely wouldn't do it because the silver lily pad is very very rare and valuable so our um our job is to um yeah uh, get get the silver lily pad uh, at some point maybe we can try in the next let's play to do that but for now let's try to cook a curry here a fruity curry yes, that's very good and then can put that into our inventory send these two items back oh this sends us back to two full coins unfortunate so let's just send this back and then go to bed and now unfortunately we'll lose this banana but i wanted to keep uh, my three soul energy coins so we can do some more upgrading example we can not upgrade the house but we could maybe upgrade uh, we need to I think unfortunately I don't really have anything I can upgrade right now what do we need here because we can actually invite people to our house that's also something and then actually trade here so we need timber beams and this uh, wood slice okay yeah I should have checked so you can at any time you know check here uh, what you have and what you need for upgrading um, and here you can yeah see all of the travelers and all of the uh, all of the quests you have new hobby Baking. Hmm. Well, technically, I traded for the bread, but I did also make some bread, so close enough. Okay, but yeah, uh, thanks for for watching this little intro to Fireside. You can maybe now understand uh, how the game works and that we're sort of in this process of upgrading our house and uh, sort of. Yeah, fixing all of the quests in the River Delta. I think one or two more journeys and we should be able to resolve all of the River Delta and then go on to the ma uh, to the forest second area of the game. And I'd really like to try my hardest to get one of those trophy items because those are really, really tricky to get, especially in the early game. Um, so thank you for watching uh, our little stream here. And if you are interested in Fireside, if this stream piqued your interest, you can wishlist the game below. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, 
you'll give it a try, give the demo a try, help us out in Steam Next Fest, and uh, see you around hopefully soon, and hopefully we can release the game soon, at least in, at, at, yeah, at least in 2024 we will do so, and um, see you then, goodbye.